I mean, look at the lyrics of that. A two-page letter written on Ramada Stationery, like they've been at the Ramada Inn, dated April 22. That's just, I mean, that's just good, y'all. That's chilling. Uh, Postmark Birmingham. So uh, welcome in, everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today is Wednesday, July the 20th, in the year of our Lord, 2022. And the biggest thing going on in my community, I run the Bowden Community Group, private group, Facebook page, right? And y'all, I'm telling y'all what, we've got scandals in this town. So what happened is, apparently this old gal goes up to the Piggly Wiggly Deli and says, I want fried chicken. And they said, I'm sorry, we're, we're not making any more fried chicken today. Well, the customer says, uh, excuse me, it says y'all open till four, it's 3.50. So the woman says, well, we're not making any more fried chicken. It's 3.50. And the woman says, but it's four o'clock. So the woman who wanted the chicken, apparently the Piggly Wiggly Chicken's good. I'm going to go get me some today. So if it's that good, they're going to fight over it. So the woman starts yelling at the Piggly Wiggly worker. Well, the Piggly Wiggly worker is 22 years old. So the Piggly Wiggly worker's mama gets on the Bowden Community page and just says, I want to find this woman that fussed out my daughter. And it just created this human, I said, said that the woman had, uh, what's those things, beads in her hair. Said, I want to find her. If y'all know who she is, let me know. Said, I'm going to confront her about yelling at my daughter. And y'all, it opened up the biggest scandal that this city has ever faced. And the sex scandal is, everybody saying, well, it's 350. You should have just cooked the chicken. So now, some entrepreneur, hey, turn that down. Daddy's in a session for the love of God. What's wrong with y'all? Unbelievable. So now an entrepreneurial spirit in our little town of 2000 is selling t-shirts that says you should have just cooked the chicken. And it's got a chicken on it wearing a Piggly Wiggly t-shirt and the chicken's got braids in its hair. And I'm buying a t-shirt. So if y'all want one, let me know. <laughs> Set you up with a Piggly Wiggly uh, chicken t-shirt. I said, what a great idea. Anyways, got a big scandal, so I'm trying to put the fires out. Everybody's like, we shouldn't be doing this in Bowden. It's so, it's so scandalous. We should be kind to one another. And uh, But at the same time, I've got like, you know, 300 extra people wanting to get into the Bowden community group. It's, it's, it's just fun. So anyway, welcome in, everybody. Look at this market, y'all. Oh, behave. We're up 0.93%. Uh, regardless of what the fried chicken is doing, this is amazing. So market is up. The AD is at uh, N slash A, which means, actually, the AD is at, what, uh, 196 or so? Why is it not showing here? Show my AD for the, anyway, AD around 196. So kind of strong, not too strong. But look at this, y'all. We busted out of the 15-minute opening range. 15-minute opening range is here in gray. Here's where we open on the white line. This is valuated average price, which is ZWAP, or as some people say, the Uh, Here's the hourly mid band that shows we are a marching upwards and we're above the overnight high. So we are bullish, 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 bullish. And check this out, y'all. Here's where we're making our profit. When you sell options and volatility goes down, then, you know, that we normally are short Vega uh, with us selling options. So with us being short Vega, and volatility going down, that normally means that our options are decaying, right? So what we have sold as a balloon is now squishing down to where there's less air in the balloon. And that's what we want, ultimately, for our options to decay. And when they decay, well, we make it the money. We make it the money. So here we are, everything looking good. So yesterday we looked at the, um, we looked at the, expected move for SPX. And we notice the expected move. Oh, Pete's waiting in the room. Did I let everybody in, Ed? Oh, and I got to enable this transcription here. All right, so here we go. So notice we have now busted above the expected move bullish. Look at that, y'all. So we were not expected to go above that, but now we're above it, which means the bear market is over. Camp Town Lady sang a song, do-da, do-da. Well, not so fast. 
Let's see what's happening here with our volume profile. What is, oh, oh no, y'all. We have now gone from a period of being over bought to now we are oversold for the area above us, right? So the fair value area is up here somewhere. I'm gonna adjust the chart so you see it. But we are now oversold for the fair value uh, range above us. So yesterday I said, we're probably gonna come back into here. We're probably gonna come back into here. And they say, Bobby, you don't know jack squat crap, young man. So with that being said, what do we think? Well, let's go to our linear regression channel, which gives us a nice little picture. So this is saying the fair market is, well, not so fast. Hold on just a second. Now we did cross the 50, um, 50 uh, daily moving average here, right? So we would expect that to be a little bit of resistance, but we bounced right past that. So where are we going? Where are we going? Well, there's a good likelihood that we're going to this 4,000 area, which would be about right here, right? And we may be going up to about right here, right? 4,050. So I could put a little thing there as a little target, but it doesn't surprise us at all that we're going to go here. Now, the dumb money, which you, ladies and gentlemen, are not part of, will say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Whew, we escaped the bear market. We escaped the recession. You and I know, however, that this is not the case because you and I look at something else. You and I look at the volume. And if we look at volume, we notice that volume increases on the down move. So down move, what happens to volume? Volume goes up. What's happening on the up move? Volume going up. All contrary, volume going down. So we know that this is not sustainable for the long run. It's just not. And we know that the sellers will come in because the smart money knows we are in an extended bear market. There's nothing at this point to indicate that it is over. I believe that we're in recession. And I believe that this is going to be a two to three year uh, period of doing ups and downs and ups and downs as we have a lot farther down to go. But what do I know? Because the cool thing is, as much as we can talk about this stuff, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter where, where the market goes. We just kind of like pontificating, right? We're pontificators. So we get on here, we think that we know what we're doing, and we really don't. We really don't. So with that being said, what we're going to do today, well, I want to show you something first here for a second. And I may need a couple of y'all to beta test it. There is a chance I will have our spreadsheet done today. So spreadsheet is this. Check this out, y'all. I've got it fixed so that if you put in uh, micros, naked put, it'll determine your credit. What's this? If you do spy, look at there. It'll determine your credit. If you do spy and you do spy, a, you want to do a debit spread, boom, boom, boom. It'll determine your credit. Isn't that cool? So it'll do SPY, it'll do ES, it'll do SPX, and it'll do MES. And that's about as far as I can get. Right? So if you want to say SPY is XSP or whatever that stuff that uh, Ed is trading as well, then you can do that. You could even add your column out right to the right that says the SPY is really XSP. So, you know. so this gets most of our S&P 500 stuff that we trade. And I will fix this column today. And I may need a beta tester or two to go through it, you know, you know, make, just make sure that there's no gaps in any of my programming. Now, the hard part's going to be, so I'll have this done today, right? I'll have this done today. Then the hard part's going to be, I'm going to have to take the formula of all of this, and then I'm going to tie into the weekly premium here, right? So we'll tie it into this, so it'll keep up with all this, keep up with how much premium you sell. And I'm trying to think, oh my gosh, how, how big of a deal does that be? I don't know, I haven't looked yet, but we'll see if we can figure that out. So there's a possibility, don't hold me to it. I, there's a chance, because I don't think I'm going to the gym today, y'all. I went to the gym yesterday and that little old gal almost killed me. I come out of there and I go, oh my God, why would she do this to me? 
So I was doing planks on the floor. I'm doing leg lifts. I'm doing all kinds of ungodly exercises. She'll, and she'll say, okay, we're going to do the Batman squat today or the whatever. And I'll be like, and she acts like I know what I'm doing. And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. But I can tell you one thing last night. I did not sleep at all hard because my thighs, I can't even feel them. I can't feel my thighs. So I'm thinking I may need a day off today. I've been going an hour a day, but I don't know if I can do it today. She killed me yesterday. Anyway, I'll try to tie this all in. May need a couple of y'all to uh, beta test. And, uh, oh, so Callie's volunteered to help. Good. He is a spreadsheet guru. Awesome. Well, you probably improve upon what we've got. Because let me tell you how old Bobby learned all this. Y'all probably thinking, man, he comes up with all these formulas. He's probably master at all the crap. No, I learned it all on YouTube, baby. YouTube. That's how I learned all this stuff. So, you know. Make it your own. Do what you want to. And, of course, Ed, you can never satisfy Ed. Ed, uh, you know, Ed's doing a 12-week uh, coaching thing with me. And I'm learning more from Ed than he's learned from me. And he's like, I don't want to do 0.0015 on the Delta adjustment. And I'm like, unbelievable. So we had to change it all for him. Had to personalize it for Ed. So, uh, you know. All right, so here we go. What are we doing today? Oh, I was supposed to show. Who needed to see something? Uh... Let's see. I was going to say that uh, Carrie wanted to show. So y'all been using my spreadsheet and apparently over on your micros page, you're trying to get this to work. We had to do this with Ed too and it doesn't work. So here's what you do. Okay. You go here, uh, go to the very first one, right? K or A2 and your drop down is not working. Then I want you to go to data. Then I want you to go to data validation. Okay. And then I want you to say under settings, I want you to do a list. Okay, list. And then you're going to click over here for the source of your list. So click on the source of your list, right? So the source of your list is this stuff right here. So make sure you left click on spy and go all the way down to MES. And then unclick and then hit enter. Hit OK. And you'll be going, I'm not sure why the spreadsheet that I moved to y'all guys didn't have that on. Then what you do is go into this little corner right here to where it makes a cross. And I said little cross, not that cross, not the, not the big white cross, but the black cross. Here we go on black and white again. You don't want white, you want black. Unbelievable. All right. So once you get a little black cross, get right there, then double click. When you double click that, it will copy everything that you've done here down. Okay, but make sure this is blank because if you don't, it'll copy MES all the way down, which may not be a bad deal if you want MES, but I would leave this one blank to start with. Once you fix the formula, then get the black cross and double kick. Kerry, does that answer your question? Yes, all sir. Right. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, good, 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 good. Y'all ever watch that Marcus guy on the, he does options trading online? He's good, 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 good. He's like Australian or English or something like that. One of those funky foreign countries. And he's the one that says, I'm going to pull out my handy dandy calculator. I like that guy. Somewhere. I'm not sure if he makes any money, but I like that guy. All right, so here we go. Markets up, markets up. Uh, what are we going to do today? Well, let's just do what we always do. Let's close my tester, my turkey baster here. I'll have the tester hopefully ready today. Uh, let's go record our net list, shall we? Shall we? Today is... Hey, wait a minute. Where's my net lit from yesterday for the love? Did I not do it yesterday? Unbelievable. Well, it'll make look, it'll, that's good because it looked like I made more money today. Let's see how we do. This one might be over 100,000 now. Uh, oh my gosh, it went down. How'd it go down? 99, 701, 75. Unbelievable. I'm going to lose money. I lost $276, right? It feel right to me. It feels icky to me. Anyway, well, we'll go. All right, so what's our deltas? Still get our grids. Uh, Got to get to the right account, which is that one. Get the monitor tab. Take my groupies off, because your groupies won't show all your stuff. Is that me, little fellas? Hey, little Liza. Little Liza Jane. So our deltas are $36.65. I see it. Our deltas are 36.65. All 
our theta, come on, let's build that theta up 61.22. Hello, 61.22. Fast, but thank you, sweet love. What are you about to do? All right, here we go. Don't worry about it. It's all good. All right, here we go. So, how much buying power are we using? Uh, let's see, we're using 12,890. 12,890. So, God, less buying power. Look at us. I can't believe we're down in money today. What's the crap? All right, so I could have a maximum delta of 150. We're at a delta of 36. We're really good. Our theta is a little low. We need to create more theta. Uh, and we're not using a lot of buying power at all. So what do you do, Bob? What does old Bob Bob do here today? I really don't know. I want to go to the other account first. And let's do the Greeks and Indians. So we'll go, we'll go to the Crimson account. It's crimson, Crimson, Crimson. Let's see how that account's doing. Crimson account. You're going to tell me this one's down two today? Unbelievable. 72022. All right. So 72022. We are at uh, 25, 720. How is it down? What the crap, man? 726.71. That's a dang man. Down $101 from yesterday. What the crap. All right. Let's do our Greeks and ratios. Right, so Crimson is 15.76. Mm -hmm. 15.76. You ain't got to do the decimals if you don't want to. You can just run. I'm a precision expert. 25. Bobby, yes. What I do run. Today, it's looking around that the bid ask spreads are seemingly impossible. Oh, really? They're wide, huh? Yeah. Uh, it, it's probable. That what you typed in there is pure fiction. Okay, good. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just can't imagine that I'm down on a big up day and I've got positive deltas and the volatility's coming in. It just doesn't seem right, does it? To y'all? So I'm glad you mentioned that, Ken. 46.90. So we're only using 18% of our buying power. Our deltas are fine. We can have a maximum delta of 39. Our theta, we are at the point one area. Look at that, which is really good where we want to be, right? And we're under allocated on our buying power, which is really good because it means you're kind of safe, especially on this up move when we know the down move's coming. We just know it is. So we're just kind of waiting. So let's look and see how the ladies are doing today. All right, let's see. We're up 17% on that. 22%, 25%, 29%, 18%, 31%, 37%. So that's why I'm saying, am I really down $128? All these things, y'all, are just up. I mean, they're, they just are. So if you're looking, you know that we don't really have anything to close. Now, I've got my little put debit spread here that I'm waiting to match with a naked put. Right? But we're not selling the naked put today because the market is up. So really, there's nothing to do in the account. Our theta's fine. Our buying power is fine. Our deltas are fine. Our theta, everything's good. I just don't see managing one of these particular trades. There's really nothing to do. All right. So, and don't force trades because here's what JT says, what about someone to call? All right. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about this. And... You could, uh, you could sell a call or call spread. What we showed a couple weeks ago is that we just can't get far enough out on the calls. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hey, Bob, Mr. Prognosticator, you just showed that we'll probably go to the top of that little area there and then we'll pop back down. Yeah, but I ain't that confident on it. I ain't gonna do it. What if the bear market's over? What if, you know, and calls, I think the majority of us here can say we hate calls. Calls have caused us more trouble than they're worth. And because of the put skew in the options, we simply can't get far enough out on the calls to justify the risk. If you want to do it as a call spread, that may be a way to do it. But I don't want to mess with it. Does anybody else feel like that? I mean, didn't we have this discussion? 
And I know, JT, you may not have, have heard the discussion, but we actually showed that we can't get that far away. And we can show that now, which may be a nice, nice little thing today. So let's look at the let's look at the micros. Come here, little Mr. Micro. So ordinarily we would sell, let's say what our naked put would be. Our naked put would be closest to 50 or closest to 60 without going over. So our naked put would be, if we're doing a one, 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 right, would be where we could sell one for 20. Well, let's see where we're at here. So selling one for 20 would be 3,400. Let's get the handy dandy calculator, as that Marcus did would say. Let's bring it down. I said, let's bring it. So uh, markets at 3974 minus 3400 for what to sell the $20 put, right? So we can get, what's this show? We can get 574 points away from the market to sell that $20 put, okay? Conversely, let's go on the other side and let's see what is on the other side. Now, I got no problem with y'all selling calls. It's just that every time I do, I lose money. So y'all, y'all do y'all. Y'all do y'all. These funky prices, y'all. 51, 12, 29, 17, 60, 30. Weird, weird, weird. Isn't that strange? That's crazy stuff, man. We got some crazy prices and still it. Well, I'll sell that one for 23 bit. So I don't know if I can show you a good example here. Let's see. Let's see where the look at this, y'all. 105, 30, 90. Uh, weird, 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 weird. But let's just show you. I mean, so if we're gonna go. Well, we can get one for 20. Can't really get one for 20 that we know is really, really 20. Uh, let's go. You wouldn't think the bid that. Well, heck, let's just keep on going down here, right? Let's go down here. And let's say this 27. <laughs> so the market is at, let's say, let's say that this is even the right price. Lord, look at this, y'all. This is crazy. Let's go to the e meetings. Let's, let's go to, let's go to the e -meetings. See if those spreads are a little closer over here. Set 58. So the 20 over here is about the same. Let's see. Just look tighter over here. 3390. That's about where we were, right? Let's see what our handy dandy calculator says. 3390. Yeah. So 3400. So 574 points there. So that's good. Let's see what we could do on the call side. So I'm going to a call. I wish I could just take this off my screen and say, I wish I could call them up and say, will y'all restrict my ability to sell calls? Just take it away from me. Yeah, a little bit tighter over here now. All right, so here's the 2050, right? Here's 2050 at 4310. Okay, well, let's open this up a handy dandy calculator. Come here, little calculator. Come here, little baby. So uh, here we are, 4310, 4310 minus where we're at 3972. So remember on the puts, we could get away 574 points. Over here, you can only get away 338 points. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is called ski. That is called put ski, right? And as, uh, uh, Brian said pricing's all screwed up right now. Indeed it is. And uh, yeah, Gary says calls are dangerous. Skew is not in our favor. Exactly. So that's why a few weeks ago I said, y'all, please don't let me ever sell another call. Please. Now, I bet if I sold one day, y'all be like, that's okay, Bobby. We love you still. Ah, you're supposed to tough love, baby. You're supposed to go slap me in the face. Whoa, I heard a little bit. Slap me in the face and say, you ain't supposed to sell calls anymore. So I basically gave up and said, look, we're going to be long deltas because we're selling on the put side. We just don't need to be too long deltas. So if you've got a net lick in your account, how do we know how much is too long? Right? $100,000, here's the metric I'm going by, 0. 0.0015. So I don't want to be more than 150 positive deltas in a $100,000 account. Now you do you. Of course, Ed had to screw it up on his side. Ed's like, well, I, I don't like that. So Ed's wanting to go, he does his times point oh oh one. So he doesn't want to be longer than 100 deltas on that. 
100,000 this year. Okay? Yeah, you do you. Whatever your little preference is. So what we're trying to say is, even though we are going to carry positive deltas, let's not be too positive, shall we? Especially in this bear, bear market. Are there any questions on that? That's cute. So we covered skew, I think, really, really, really good. All right, so what are we going to do today? Well, we're not going to do anything in the crimson account. And that kind of sucks, too, because now look how our, look what we're doing in our crimson account. Remember, we was making money every day, and I could take the family to Arby's and all kind of stuff. And it's been a while, y'all. Look at this. It's been a while. Look, we got all these orange days. What's an orange day? That's the day that old Bobby hadn't closed nothing. He hadn't made a profit. He made a loss. He's just made $120-something this year or this month of July. So I'm not doing too good. But that's fine. I'm not losing either, really. Right? I'm not losing. I'm just letting my trades uh, kind of build up because I went on vacation. I right? got everything paired down. So that's good. But let's go to the other key because I got a feeling in the other camp we'll be able to manage a trade. Notice in the other camp, in the big account, that no, our fate is not where it needs to be. I thought our fate was here. Okay. Let's go back over here. Let's get the other camp. Which one is it? This one here. All the trades in this one. So what's this, y'all? Well, hello, ladies. 93%. We found out that the optimal time to close them is a 65% profit. We got a 62. We got a 42. We got a negative 42. Now that can be. We got a plus 63, plus 78, plus 52, plus 64, and a negative 1750. So what do we do? I don't think it's going to hurt us to take a little profit here, especially when you're up 95%. So let's do that. 95%. So we're going to do the put spread first. Well, not first, but we've got to select it first, create closing order, because it won't let us do it all as one order from that little screen. And then we've got to go and grab the 32 of the 3300s and the 30 day. Two of the 3300s and the 30 day. Two of the 30, I'll, I'll, I won't remember, two of the 3300s and the 30 day. Two of the 3300s and the 30 day. Come in, look, there you go, hello there. There you go. So let's make that two. So 80 cent debit, let's see if we can get out for 75 cent debit. 75 cent debit. Aha! Yeah. All right. So we just closed the 1116 for a 75 cent dip. Go to the spreadsheet. Go to the micros. What was up? It was the 1116. There we go. 1116. Look, our oldest trade on the board. Everything else has been closed. Look at this. Look at all those wins. So we're going to close the 1116, our oldest trade on the board. And what do we close it for? A 75, 75 cent debit. So 0.75, which means it cost us 1632 to get in, but we took in a credit of 118.68, leaving us a profit of, come on, baby, give me some red lobster money, $102.36. Hello, everybody. That in there. One, two, thirty-six. Make it cream, baby. Make it rain. All right. So then we're gonna go and we're gonna get our profit calendar. 10236. Profit calendar. All right. Everybody got the profit calendar? Y'all got that? 236 today. Look at us, y'all. 102.36. Cha chink, cha chink. So we made $207 this week. Format painter, no, 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 no. Let's go here. Format painter is the best thing that Excel has. Look at there. That makes it the same way. Gives it all the attributes of the one that we're copying. We'll make it green and look at that. So how have we done this so far in July on this account? Much better than the other account, right? So we've made 329.8 plus 22.8. 6.78 plus 207.22. Realized profits of oh, 207.22 plus 226.78 plus 329.8. Look at us, 556.52. <sighs> All right, All right who's got questions? Questions or comments? Everybody fine?
Now, what could I do today? I could, um, I could buy a put debit spread, right? I could do that. Remember our, and it looks like we've got a lot of new people coming in. Uh, so we've got 28 uh, people in the thing today, which is really, really, really cool. Remember our little thing here? So puts and calls, right? And what you do during different environments. Market down. Market down. And let's make it blue, baby. Market up. You do different things, right? So market down, that's where you sell puts. Right? Market up, that's where you buy puts. Now, Bobby, why is that the case? Well, the case is when the market goes down, volatility normally goes up, right? And the price of this put goes from an, a, a balloon that has no air in it to the balloon with air. So you're able to sell farther away from the money. This thing explodes a little bit. It gets a lot bigger and we're able to sell it, right? And you're able to buy puts on the update. Why? Well, because that put gets smaller and more, uh, less expensive, right? So you're buying it, hoping that the price will eventually go down so that the put explodes and gets bigger. When you're selling it, you hope that it's big already and that it's gonna go down so you can buy it back when it's less inflated, okay? So it's just the opposite with calls, right? Now I don't like messing with calls, but on a down day, that's the best time to buy you a call. And on an up day, that's the best time to sell you a call. Same principle, right? Same principle with the calls, but we like. Yucky, yucky, yucky. I showed one of the skews. Nasty, even in a fair market. And you can't really do things because that calls me to get tested. So screw the call. Screw the call. That's what I'm going to name this video today. Screw the call. All right? Screw the call. Sell the puts. Buy the puts. So on a day like today, what you could do is you could buy a put spread, put debit spread, right? Buy a put spread, BPS. Or you don't want to get too tricky with it, but you could actually just buy a put, buy a single put. Then when you get the good down day, you could sell the one to complete your spread that is 50 points down from your put, right, to create your put debit spread. And do it for a better price than you could, uh, you know, maybe today. So... But I would say don't get too fancy with it. If you're going to buy a put, debit spread, just buy the whole spread today. Buy the whole spread today. Then on a good old down move, you can sell the put. Or if your theta is low, like mine, uh, today, you could put on a 111 or a 112 trade. Why? Well, you know, the average VIX is around, you know, 16 or 17, typically. So VIX is still at 24. So it's not necessarily a bad time to sell options, to sell premium. It's not a bad time. It's just not an optimal, optimal day to do. It's just not an optimal day to sell premium. So if your normal trunk size in your $100,000 account is two contracts, well, maybe in, in you're saying I need a little theta. Well, you could do the entire 111, including the naked put and the put debit spread, but just do one trunk. And then on a good down day, do your normal two tranches or maybe even go up to three tranches so that you're building your theta, but you're just doing things a little, you know, strategically. So Carlos says, be aware that when you buy a single put, your delta is going to go negative temporarily until you sell the put of the spread to balance it out, which is fine, right? It is. And, and he makes a good point because think about it. <laughs> when we're doing all this stuff, uh, you know, we had the conversation yesterday. Someone said, well, I just don't like buying the put spreads on day up and things like that nature. And I kind of explained to you that what you're basically doing is you're buying a hedge. You're buying a hedge.
by buying the put debit spread. If you're buying a put, you're buying a hedge. And you and I are at the point that we're, we've are we got a strategy of these 111s and 112s to where we're just strategically putting them on. We're just strategically taking them off. So since I put on two tranches yesterday on the up move, I don't think I'm going to put on any today. I think I'm just going to chill. I've closed the trade. I do need extra theta in the account, but no need in taking that risk. Let's wait till we get a good down day, which could be today, <laughs> based on how the market does, right? It goes up 50 points. It may be down 50 points in the same day, or, you know, maybe tomorrow, or maybe Friday. So what I really like about our campaign, y'all, uh, that we've got going is this very strategic, right? Don't you miss the days when you were just like Tom Shoshna and you were just hurling trades? Do you miss that? I don't miss that. I mean, I love Tom. And every time I watch him just sling trades, he's having fun. You know, gold and silver and wheat and soybeans. And I used to do all that. I used to trade all that. I traded the euro. I did the British pound. I mean, I've traded all that stuff, yeah. I've done the stocks, I've done the IBMs, I've done the Microsofts, I've done the Teslas, I've traded all that stuff. And it is fun because you're slaying trades out there. The only problem is you're going to lose money. And I dare one of you to prove me wrong, to say, Bobby, I slung everything and I made money. No, you didn't. No, you know, you know, you didn't. You had fun. It, it fed your... Uh, degenerate gambling instinct. It did all of that, but it didn't make you a consistently profitable trader. So what we're doing is we're not just doing one one ones and one one twos. I don't care what you're selling. I would encourage you to sell premium, but to do it strategically. So what we're doing is trying to build a strategic approach to attacking the markets and to extract profits from the market. And to me, it makes me so much calmer under pressure. It allows me to go on vacations. It allows me to go to the gym. It allows me to do things with my kids. It allows me to enjoy my retirement. It, it allows me to do all that stuff and not get too bent out of shape. So that's what I hope that you guys are, are learning, that we're building a strategy. It's not just throwing on trades and managing trades. How many of you go, I've got to have a stop loss on every trade? How many times have you seen me do a stop loss? I don't do them. I don't think they're necessary because you're looking at the individual trees. You're looking at the individual trades. Don't look at the individual trades. Look at the portfolio. Look at the forest. Forest first, portfolio management first, then trade management. Portfolio first, then trade management. So that's why I'm not closing anything in the other account because yeah, I, don't, I don't have to. I'm underutilizing my buying power. I'm right at 0.1% of my theta. Uh, I'm just going to let things work. I don't have to look at my individual trades and say, oh, take this one off at 47% profit. I don't have to. And when you start getting out of the individual trade mentality and you get out of the mentality of just slinging trades left and right, you feel a little more accomplished. You feel a little more like, hey, I kind of got this. All right. Any questions, comments? Little Red, you got a question or comment? No. No? Tell everybody hey. Hi. Hi. What are you playing? I'm watching. What? You're YouTube. working? I'm watching YouTube. No, oh, you're watching YouTube. Are you watching the Sweet Bobby channel? Yes or no? No. I didn't hear this. All right. All right. If there's no other questions, I will see y'all tomorrow.